over this last year, I have been doing nothing but studying and reskilling myself, retooling myself for the workforce because I wasn't able to get a job. And a lot of my reskilling and retooling was within mathematics, statistics, and probability, along with the language model learning and things like that. I will tell you this. I found the secret in Yu-Gi-Oh is this. Three. The number is three. The secret number in Yu-Gi-Oh is three. No matter what it is. Three hand traps, three interactions, three negates, three. Three seems to be enough to make your opponent do whatever you want or to deliver you victory. Just so happens going second allows you to have six cards. So technically you have two chances of having the optimal three cards. Now, because I know these numbers, I have created something called the distribution. I put it into the AI and the AI does this calculation for you. When you talk about key cards and all this other stuff, but people don't understand this, which is the reason why I built these decks the way I built them, because I understand that you can pack so much into three cards that the rest of the cards almost don't matter in the deck if you can get them to synergize. And that is the one thing that keeps you from having a good deck to a great deck. The one thing that takes you from being a locals champion to a YCS champion, the difference between YCS champion and defeating Jesse Cotton and dethroning him in 2025. That's the thing. Understanding these nuances and the power of one. And that's all it is in Yu-Gi-Oh! And you just got to take my word for it or follow my ways. But we're going to get into these replays. Now, a comment that I that I always see. Everybody's a genius, right? Everybody's Jesse Cotton in the comments, right? Everybody's like, well, what will this deck do against mm, uh, this card? <laughs> Not like your deck could be Shifter. <laughs> so that's what, you, what you're telling me is you're projecting. Shifter beats you every time. You hate when people play Shifter against you. And it makes you scream and cry. I get it. Because I feel the same way about this card. Nibiru. I don't like playing Nibiru because I feel like I never have it when I can use it. And of course, when I do have it, they always stop short or there's always a problem with Nibiru. Never enough, too many. I don't like this card, but every time I play against it, I get nibiru But does the fear of Nibiru keep me from summoning five monsters? No! And it can never, because you gotta realize that you're dealing with number. And if we're dealing with number, that means that we're not just dealing with Nibiru, we're dealing with the statistical odds and the zeitgeist of Nibiru. Is Nibiru being played? And if it's being played, can it be played in this deck? And typically the answer is no for most people, but people are afraid of Nibiru, they play Altergeist. Well, I'm, I'm keeping my summons low. No, you're not, you're a fool. You're gonna lose. I've only told you that to just level set you because you need to be level set. A lot of people in Yu-Gi-Oh, this is an independent one-on-one -on -one game, a one-on-one -on -one system. That's why I made AI so that you can bounce your ideas off of it. So that you can utilize the archetype codex to find these synergies. But it is a, 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 a game that is played in a community, the zeitgeist, but also individually in your own head, in your own mind. So you come to a lot of conclusions. You come to a lot of assumptions based off your conclusions and, and vice versa. And it takes you down a dark path of faux knowledge. You don't know what you think you know. So all I'm saying is because I know of this number of three, that means I can make a lot of decks work because I know this number of three. And because I know 
that if I can focus that three on my opponent or focus that three on myself or how powerful I need to lean on that, that's called the distribution, I can make a deck that needs one card to run seem like it works like clockwork all the time and I can make a deck that needs two or three cards to run seem like it works like clockwork all the time. It took me a, a long time to develop the Tri Brigade Gladiator Beast deck to the way it was and to make it be able to flow with every meta and continue to keep up till 2025. I didn't realize that I was my calendar needed to be opened up so that I could destroy people in 2025. Jesse Cotton, I might come for you for the, with my Gladiator Beast. Because in 2025, all things are possible, my boy. But we're in 2024 right now. So I just had to start right there with that. It's a long rant, but it needed to be said. I've continued to refine the deck as my opponent begins his cook. And I've decided to remove the Kaijus and just add more things like Dark Hole because I've like really trimmed the fat, so to speak. And I've learned how to use the combos in my deck more effectively. Also, cards like my Omni cards that I, I call it an Omni card. It's a card that is required for a combo, but also balances a Garnet but also serves multiple purposes based on multiple situations. So I call Monster Reborn a Omni card, and you're gonna understand why. Now, this guy is going off. He's completely cooking here. He's completely cooking. He's going off. Okay. Look at this guy. He's going bananas. Like, look at this. He's going to fuck off. Then he, then he does this. Goes for the fucking protos. God, I hate these guys. They do this. IP protos calls fire on protos. I don't know if it said that, but it called fire on protos. I hold, hold on. He calls fire on protos. He calls fire on protos. He calls fire on protos. I have nothing to tell him. I'm playing dragon, except for maybe this handsome gentleman over here, Gaia. But other than that. Like, how does he know? But again, well, what are you going to do against um, Protoss? What are you going to do against Maxi? What are you going to do against, what are you going to do against, what are you? I, no, only thing I have to do is deal with probability. And probability says that he's not going to have Shifter, Maxi, Ash, and all this. So because he's done all this, it has one card in his hand that card in his hand is maxi or not it is ash or not it is nabiru or not and he has this card on the board says the fire can't be special stuff my whole deck's fire what am i gonna do i'm gonna show you i'm gonna be a true duelist that's what i'm gonna do watch these now i'm gonna show you something draw maxi maxi luck is not on my side they proved it to me and showed me hey man this is yours to lose. That's Konami signal. Okay, that's fine. But now I look into my hand and I want to point something out to you. In a standard Tempai Dragon deck, you'll see these cards. But you will not see Monster Rebone. You will not see Monster Rebone. And it's at one. So look at this. I make my own luck. Luck's not on my side. I make my own luck. Probabilities. It was a low chance on both of these. A low chance that it would be my sixth card. A low chance I would open with this. But because I open with an Omni card, it serves multiple purposes. Now, what purposes does it serve? It serves the purpose of giving me a means to fight back against this opponent. Now, how am I going to do that? I have to play into my hand. So let's get into it. I'm starting off with Dark Hole because my target is Dark Hole, get him to respond or to let IP Masquerina go to the graveyard. That's my plan. So he begins to special summon. He begins to do his jutsu. Now at first I wasn't gonna max C on the IP, but then he changed the other card and then I was like two for one, I'll take it. I'll take it, Play, playing deep into it. I made a decision to skip the first one, but then I took the second one. Then I draw into Raigeki. That's nice. Here comes SP Little Knight. Then I draw into Sangin Summoning. 
you know, unlucky. But again, I wasn't planning on these, but it's what I got. You know what I'm saying? Then I draw in a lightning storm. Make my own luck because I made the good choice on playing the max C and drawing in drawing into the cards. Then I get to play the lightning storm to blow up all his back row because I don't have any cards on the field. So I get to play deeper into my deck and remember standard Tempai Dragon deck all these cards, but Tempai Dragon Dragon made Dragon made. Tenpai Dragon Maids, whatever you want to call it, has Monster Reborn in the deck list. Therefore, I have a game changer. I have a play Mecha. So he goes ahead and uses SP Little Knight to protect his cards because he doesn't want to risk the biscuit. Of course, I'm going for the back row because I've got Raigeki, but I'm not going to use Raigeki because the target has went to the grave. Monster Rebone. I Rebone the IP. Then I'm going to activate Sang and Summoning to search the deck to add a card. We can't summon a fire monster, but I'm going to show you what I did there. Now, 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 you might have, now, you might have said, why did he do that? He can't special summon any fire monsters. You fool. You've already made the, the classic Melanda. And then also, <laughs> you fool. You can't special summon this beast. I see your criticisms. I see you typing in the comments. It's all good. Now, I'm attacking and I'm ending my turn. And you might think that I'm cooked. But I'm far from done. Let us go. Now, let me show you the power of one. Now, this duelist doesn't know what's going on. But this beast is unaffected by the cards. And we've got our IP on the field. Now, our IP is going to target SP Little Knight, of course, so we can get cards up out of here. But let's continue the gameplay. I activate my effect, and of course, he activates his effect, Double Banishing. Now, with this Double Banishing, he's going to get back his own beast. Am I tilted? No. There won't be another turn. For this duelist will lose here and now. He begins his summoning ritual by placing all his ritual beast up on the field. And he enters battle. Now by attacking my beast, I get to use a special effect. See, when this card is attacked, I can special summon a beast from the graveyard. And this card cannot be destroyed by Blardle. Quickly, special summon and synchro. Now that I special summon back this monster, it's time to hit the synchro real fast. Let me hit that synchro real fast. Now we're going to bring out old Biden dragon. Let's go, Biden. <laughs> and now Biden dragon's on the field. We're going to use Fadra. Fadra and Biden. Synchro Shokan. Come on. Come on. Synchro Shokan. Ah, Sabgen by Trident Dragon. Now, you might that went a little too fast for you, you might have missed it. But in the midst of the attack, he only had one attack. He's attacking with this card. I just my monster can die by battle. Go ahead, special summon from the graveyard. Go ahead and bring out Biden. Go ahead and synchro summon again. Go ahead and bring out our boy. Now, this card has 3,000 of those things. And you're like, you fool. Didn't you account for this monster? It has 3,100 of those things. You're finished. Wrong, Dulles. You see, because I was able to use the monster reborn as the decoy and set up to play with my Sangon summoning, the opponent has fallen directly into my trap. Prepare to be hyped up. Come back by the end. Bidiant destroys the Sang and Summoning, allowing me to power up a beast. Double the attack. And if you're wondering why I'm going to win this duel here and now, because of Sangan Pai Trisendon Dragon's effect. It says, all monsters your opponent control must attack if able and cannot activate cards or effects during the battle. So guess what? 
the sleeping Protoss has wakened and the cheeks are now folded. So my answer, how will I defeat this or that? With skill, you silly Billy. Now you might see that transcendent Dragon play and think, yeah, okay, sure. You know, you cooked a little bit, you know, you, you're making all types of excuses in your head, you know, why this or that happened the way it did, which is kind of funny how people do that and then actually type out such a comment. But hey, listen to this though. I was forced to go first in this duel and I don't have an optimal play. I even have Dragon's Maid Hospitality in my hand and no Dragon's Maids. Damn, looks like I got an egg one brick. And I've only got Ash in my go second deck. I might be in trouble. Let's see what happens. My opponent forced me, forced me to go first. But his response is set three and summon. Well, it's a back row deck. Hope that the distribution provides. Let's see. Da -da. Looks like I made my own luck yet again through the power of the distribution. Now, because I put a monster face down instead of face up, I can use the lightning storm. I played in to the distribution. I knew not to put anything face up because if I drew lightning storm, it would be a dead card. So let us begin. Lightning storm, destroy all the back row. They're gonna squirm a little bit, of course, they always do. Lightning storm. All right, now watch these. Now I'm gonna show you something amazing. Of course, we're gonna ash that. <laughs> we're gonna ash that, of course. And we're gonna, now here's the choice. Okay, here's the big thing. Here's the big thing. It was important, there's a question here. Should I ash this or not? Because he could still have max C. I decided to ash it because I didn't want to let him get anything else because we had him dead to rights by destroying back row. I saw Imperm go away. So that means that this hand probably doesn't have hand traps. So let's see what happens. So I activate the effect and we're gonna summon out Tenpai Dragon Pydra. Now see, I learned something new about this deck. I learned a new combo in the midst of this duel. By special summoning Tenpai Dragon Pydra directly from the deck, I can use the effect to search the deck and add Sangenpai. Now that I've added Sangen Kaiman, I can use it to add Kitchen Dragon Maid to get my cook going. Okay, now we're gonna normal summon Kitchen Dragon Maid and then we're gonna put a card in our hand and then down to the grave. And now this is live, okay? So now we're gonna activate the effect and then we're gonna bring back our uh, Chambermaid. Chambermaid is gonna put change over and then we're gonna use the Chandra. Now, here we go, real fast, Synchro Summon into Bident. Bident's gonna bring back Chandra and now we're gonna change over into Shio! Shio is here. Now, Shio is here. Did you hear what I just said to you? Shio is here. That means this OTK is going through. That means that this OTK ain't gonna get stopped. Shio is here. Let's go. One. Come on, two. Now see, people go, this is unnecessary. You don't need this. Why, why? Well, boy, boy, first off, you don't need anything in this world. <laughs> Second, knowing that you can utilize Dragon Maid in this way is the kernel of knowledge. That is the value. By you knowing that it exists, by you knowing that it works, if something else ever comes out, you can use your brain like ChatGPT and connect the dots. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool how Shio can help you get in there though? And you don't even have to synchro. Look, I'm just gonna do a quick beat down right quick for game. I don't have to synchro anything. I can reserve my synchro and my omni negate for any surprises. 
And what does that do? It helps me win games that I'm supposed to lose. That helps me to do what? Create my own luck. Let's go. Let's go. He's had enough. He's had enough. He's had enough. And I know he had enough because I hit him with Kitchen Dragon Maid. And I had to hit him with Kitchen Dragon Maid. I had to. Now, here we go again. And this is pretty much a vampire. Um, not vampire. It's a zombie. It's a zombie control deck. And, I, and I'm guessing he just bricked pretty bad. Like, he just didn't draw what he needed. It had pretty decent stuff in it. But afterwards, you know, he just, it just to me, it seems like he pretty much bricked. But look at this open hand. Monster Reborn, Hospitality. You see how we keep constantly opening with these, right? So the deck leans into these cards. Monster Reborn, Hospitality, Kitchen Maid with uh, Tenpai Dragon, uh, Jinrock, Jinroku. And Jinroku can, you know, do his thing. Now watch these. So we're going to start with Hospitality, Special Summon, uh, Kitchen Maid. Kitchen Maid is going to send away, um, going to send away the uh tink heck but it's gonna trigger the vampire kingdom now the reason why i want to do that is of course if we get vampire kingdom out of the way and we get this to hurry up and resolve and get that done now we can move on with the rest of our combo but the reason why that's relevant is because you sometimes you don't draw back row removal sometimes you need a sacrifice so that your one card combo can be played successfully without fail but we got more though so because this is going to chain, we're going to go ahead and add chamber, send chamber down. Then kingdom's going to do his thing. And then I'm going to use monster rebone. We're going to rebone this monster and see. And at this point, like the AI said, this is not just random luck. It's a calculated outcome because we run hospitality and monster reborn together. It's only inevitable that we might draw them together. So there are opportunities that we can play them twice. And because we can play them twice, we can do these. Now we're going to use the effect and we're going to add the changeover. And then we're going to normal summon and then pop our effect and bring our Chundra. Now you might say, Hey, you didn't do nothing with the changeover in these. Well, hey, we're in battle phase, man, and you forgot. YT Dan is the master of battle. Am I not the one that brought you the gladiator beast? Am I not the one who brought you the maids in the chamber with the dead body? Watch these in battle. Because the battle has just begun, our dragon maids get hype. Hype me up. <laughs> 2,700 attack. Now, I, now only a tenpai player can tell you this but there's been many times where i have come across a random situation where a monster is just too big and i couldn't get off an attack or i couldn't figure something out random having a beat stick matters and also the extenders the way that we played all the cards evened out so we didn't even lose card advantage to make those plays but we had options to make those plays because we run both dragon maids and tenpai dragon together if you just run tenpai dragon guess what you're not making dragon maid plays obviously now we're attacking we're going to summon and then we're going to add the sangin kaiman Smacky smacky attacky tacky. It's over for you. So you already know how this goes But because we had this beater it goes even crazier, but the thing is if you have um, the right Levels you can hit these synchros in the middle of battle. So the dragon maids being four and three also Fits into the schema of the deck because four and three can help you get into your sevens and your tens Y'all ain't trying to duel. Y'all ain't trying to duel, man. Y'all ain't even trying to play. All right, my boy. So I'm at 46 cards on this one, on this version. I've made a few small changes here, and I've added some new cards because I found them to be fantastic honestly so first new card i've added is world legacy guard dragon i knew that this card existed the ai actually gave me this card a long time ago but i just didn't want to use it because i felt like it it, it was kind of out of place i felt like it didn't fit the deck 
as I felt like it wasn't as good as another copy of Hospitality or another copy or 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 Monster Reborn, for example. But then I realized, wait a minute, it's a continuous spell and it can special summon a level four or lower dragon period. That means it can summon anything. And then, okay, I had to reconsider it because I, after sh showing you special summoning um, Pydra out of the grave and doing the um, second Kaiman combo into the dragon maids was incredible. So since that was such a good combo for me, I decided to just go deeper into that. So I decided to add more Diabelle Star to Black Witch. I decided to add more Origin of the Sinful Spoils because if I can get the special summon off of this or I can get the special summon off of pretty much anything and get this into the grave or it, for the fact, any anything in the grave, anything gets in the grave. This card is live and amazing. So I've been playing two, you know, honestly only because I didn't want to play forty five because at forty five cards, you know, pretty much, you know, you know that's that's not in distribution. I'm just say that. So for for the lack of for, of a of a brick, you know, you can play dark hole. But actually, that's why, actually, that's why I was playing two because I was playing three dark hole, but I switched up. All right, so that was the first card second card is dark hole um because i decided to go into running more dia bell star engine i decided to go in i changed out the kaijus for dark hole lightning storm because i want things to be more simple more jam-packed into one card since i wasn't running a combo and and supporting an engine while also serving my deck's win condition so i decided to change it and add these dark holes also with lightning storm rule of two dark hole lightning storm lightning storm regeki um feather duster lightning storm and sometimes dark hole regeki and lightning storm dark hole you know to destroy monsters does work out in your favor sometimes but it all depends on your situation but nine times out of ten popping monsters is always good then we have tons of one card combos that we can pop off in this deck as you already know that i have demonstrated through all these different videos that i've shown you with the ai and all this stuff and i mean honestly outside of those changes i would say that's pretty much it now there is one more thing that i have not shown that i have utilized but i want to point this out this deck even has beat down like i'm not even playing with you this deck has beat down because of the way that this deck sets up the combo for tenpai dragon chundra because of the way you set it up with the snake eyes or you set it up with chambermaid you are going to have two monsters on the board before you put Chundra out. So if you put those two monsters out, you can make cross sheep. And when you synchro into your last synchro, put it under cross sheep and it boosts everybody's attack by 700. Normally, I do that after I've brought somebody back with Senpai, uh, with uh with biden dragon and if i'm summoning biden dragon and i'm special summoning with biden dragon's effect i will chain sangin kaiman so that everybody gets a boost at the end of that summon chain off of um uh cross sheep we can which can help you get your attack like up to four thousand before you pop this card and go to six thousand so again the you guys don't understand and i get it because you guys live in normal lives i'm living a pretty charmed life where i get to look at Yu Gi Oh and and dig into the nuances and and mess around and find little things and tell you about it like i got that luxury and privilege but i'm saying this is the info that can take you from scrub to champ not because you copied it directly because you see how i'm manipulating the mechanics and the synergy between the cards to create a tapestry of a win condition 
to create a picture a form of a win condition rather than saying i hope i can play my one card combo and survive the hand trap mini game because you always lose if you're thinking like that but um that's it my boys for this um Yu Gi Oh TED Talk. Hope you got something out of it. If you skipped to the end to check out the deck list, go back and watch some more of the video. It's a lot there for you.